So here's how to create a pattern out of a chain link fence. So what we're going to do first of all is make a selection. So I'm going to choose the magic wand tool and just select this area here. I could select these just by holding down shift and selecting them. That would be one way of doing it. Or I can go to select similar and it will select all the blue areas there. Now there are some areas it misses so I can just click on those to add those in as well, holding down shift. So very quickly I can get all of those blue areas selected. Then if I go to select and mask, it's showing me that actually I've selected the blue area, not the white area that I want to keep. So I'm going to click on invert. Now we can zoom in, have a look at the edges and you'll notice there are some blue edges there. So we're going to decontaminate those colors by clicking here. If it doesn't still get rid of that edge, then you can come up here and adjust the radius. And you'll see that that's now starting to remove those colors. So maybe even a radius of one might be enough. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, radius of one is enough for that. OK, so that's good enough for what we're doing. So I'm going to create a new layer with a layer mask from that selection. And we've now got our wire fence without a background. So the next step is to make this into a pattern. Now I'm going to get rid of the layer mask, but before I do, I'm going to duplicate the layer just by dragging the layer onto the new layer button. And that's just in case I want to get back to this stage. I'm going to switch that off. Then I'm going to delete the layer mask. Before I delete it, I'll apply it. And that means we've now applied that selection. And we've got rid of the blue background. Now I want to make this into a pattern, but if I try and make this into a pattern now, the edges aren't going to match up. I know that just by looking at it, but if we want proof of that, we can go to the filter menu and go to other offset. Now what the offset filter does, let me just change these numbers for a sec. And I'm going to switch that off. What the offset filter does is it moves your image across. Now you see that if I move it using the horizontal setting, it's going to move it across so that it ends halfway. Now what you can do is you can wrap the bits that have moved off here back on. So they're now coming back on and they're matching up here. And you'll see that these edges don't match up. So that means our tiling isn't going to work. Really, we want that edge to match up with that edge, don't we? So it's repeating. OK, same with vertical. If I move it down, you can see that these edges don't match up. So we need to do a little bit of work on it to get it to match up. OK, how do we do that? Well, it can be quite tricky, but it's made a lot easier if you use guides to place guides onto your image, you need to be able to see your rulers. So we go to view rulers, brings up our rulers. And then what we're going to do is move the guides to where we want to start the fence from. So I'm going to choose the edge of this link here. And I want that to line up with the edge of this link here. So I'm going to drag a second one to here. Then I need to think about the top of it. Let's drag the top one to here. So that'll be the top edge of our pattern. <clears throat> and I want to link it with the top edge of this one. So we've now created a square that will be our pattern from now on. Now, the only thing is this one and this one match up, kind of. The height is slightly wrong. And also this one and this one don't match up. So this one should be over here somewhere. So what we need to do is find some way of distorting this so it fits inside that square. So to do that, what we're going to do is go to Edit, Transform, Warp. And Warp places this grid over your image, which allows you to move it around. So you see that now I can just move that so it's exactly in the right place. I'm also going to move this one slightly. So we've now got the center of those lining up. 
and we'll do the same down here. So this one, we want the centre of that little knot, if you like, lining up. This one needs to move quite a lot. So I need to move that all the way over to there. Now it starts to distort a little bit. So what we're going to do is move this one a little bit as well. So I'm lining up this one with this one. Now you can bring down more guides. So if I bring a guide down here, it gives me a height setting that I can play around with. We need to pull that slightly back further back up. And remember, we're only worried about this area in here. It takes a little bit of toing and froing. But once we're happy with it, we're going to say, yes, I shall accept that. And now we should have the area that we want to be our pattern lining up. So what I'm going to do is just crop that. So I'm going to select the crop tool. And I'm going to drag the crop tool within that guide area. I'm going to say delete crop pixels and accept it. OK, and to check if that works, we go to Filter, Other, Offset. And this time I'm just going to offset it horizontally. Horizontally seems to be working quite well. There's still an issue with vertical. So I'm going to show you how we're going to fix that. But that's looking pretty good. We need to fix that one and that one. So I'm going to click OK this time instead of going back, because it's easier to fix these here than if they're on the edge. So I'll click OK. And what I'm going to do is just delete the bits that we don't want. So we don't want that section there. And we don't want that section there. So I need knots to replace those ones. So I'm going to select the knots that I want. Now for this one, I'm going to choose the furthest one away. That one there. And I'm going to say layer, new, layer via copy. And that's going to create my knot. So let's call it knot one. OK, I'm going to grab the move tool. And I'm going to move knot one up here. And place it in there as well as I can. Now, it doesn't match up exactly, but I'm going to show you how we're going to fix that. So we're going to zoom in. And I'm going to go to Edit, Puppet Warp. And the Puppet Warp tool allows me to add multiple points to this mesh and then distort the layer based on those points. So I'm going to add my points first of all. These are the areas that I think I'm going to have to move. And then I can basically pick up these points and just move them. So I can just move that knot across. I've added, accidentally added a point there. You can delete points just by selecting them, hitting backspace if you need to. So move that into position. Now, if we don't want to see the mesh, we can turn that off. It makes it a bit easier to move it and manipulate it. And as I said, you can select points, hit backspace, delete them if you need to. OK, so once I'm happy with it, I'll say, yep, that's fine. It's a little bit ski whiff, but you'll do a much better job than I will. So that'll be OK. And then we'll select the next section, which is this one. Go back to here and choose Layer New, Layer via Copy. And then we're going to drag that one up to here. And then go to Edit, Puppet Warp. And I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit so I can see that. Now, I switched the mesh off so you can't see the mesh, but you can still add your points. And just drag them into position. Now 
And if you need to tidy it up, you can always use layer masks or just the eraser tool just to get rid of any stray areas that you don't need and just tidy that up. Okay, so we've now got a perfectly loopable uh, chain link fence, except it's got a little dodgy bit there. But as I said, you'll do a better job than that. So now if I select that, so I'll say select all. Now at the moment, I'm just selecting the knot, so I need to make sure that these are all merged. So I'm going to select these three. I'm going to say merge layers. So that's just going to create a single layer. And then go to edit, define pattern. I'm going to call it chain links and click OK. And if I create a new layer or a new file rather, so let's create a poster. And then I'm going to select the area that I want to have fenced. So maybe it's just this area here. And then go to Edit Fill and choose Fill with Pattern. Choose my chain link fence pattern and click OK. Now you'll notice that that didn't work. This is a bit of a gotcha. It's because it's a background layer and the background layer is locked. So I just need to create a new layer. If that ever happens, don't panic. And then we'll go to fill. Choose my pattern. Click OK. And now you'll see it works. Now the downside to that is it's the size of the pattern. If I needed it to be smaller, how would I do that? Well, what we'll do is we'll undo, delete that. And I'm just going to fill it with white instead. And a filled layer can have an overlay on it. Okay, It needs to be filled to do this. That's why I filled it with white first. But then you can go to Pattern Overlay. And I'll choose my chain link pattern. That's a rock pattern I created earlier. And now, let's put that on normal mode. You'll see that I've got a scale value. So I could scale the chain link up or down to whatever size I want. So it's a really good way of being able to make these nice repeatable patterns. Okay. Now, if I wanted to give that a bit of perspective, you would think, OK, go to Edit, Transform, Perspective, and maybe move it that way, move it off into the distance. But you'll notice the pattern isn't uh, moving with it. And that's because the downside to using this technique is you're just doing that to the layer. You're not doing it to the pattern overlay on the layer. So what we need to do with this is we need to do what's called rasterize it. So basically, instead of having a layer with an effect on top of it, this is going to make the chain link part of the layer. So if you watch what happens here, when I go to layer, rasterize, layer style, suddenly that's gone. So we've now just got an image of a chain link fence. OK, so now I can go to transform perspective. Now I want to have it going off into the distance, so we're going to maybe do that. Uh, maybe have it slightly leaning. OK, and then we'll go to Free Transform Scale. And I'm just going to scale it that way. OK, so we've now got a fence that kind of goes off into the distance. So the great thing about these patterns is instead of just drawing something once, you can save it as a repeatable pattern and then you can use it in all your images. And we can have fence post patterns as well, which is a repeating fence post all sorts of other ways of creating patterns.